We've got some cool things going on, actually. Ah, oh, green bacterian flu, but that's okay. Should we have a look at it, seen as though it's out in the sun? It was sitting on one of its favorite branches. Everybody has moved around. There's an Egyptian goose walking behind the green bacterian. They're around here. And then, should we have a look at Vladimir before he swims off? He's just, sorry, we're going to bounce just before the animals all disappear. Uh, just to the left of the, uh, or right of the island now. There he goes. So Boris was out in the open, uh, not Boris, Vladimir. And unfortunately, he's not feeling on the brave side today because he swam away, as you can see. But we were very far away from him. Well, I don't know why he was so nervous, because typically you can get so close to him before he even moves off. And we must have been about 50, 60 meters away. But that's okay. We have got many other friends to look at. And just on the edge as well is a pied kingfisher. Did you see it? Just on that branch. It's sneaky, isn't it? I only saw it as you were zooming out. I was like, oh, what's that? Beautiful pied kingfisher with a spear-like beak. And hopefully between the green-backed heron and the pied kingfisher, we will find Sebastian. I, look at the water monitors here. Yeah, that one is being strange. Uh, oh, right There's there. two. One has just gone in the hole. Sorry, I re I'll tell you why now I've changed my mind why we're looking here. There's two water monitors. This one on the right is the smaller one. The other one went into the hole in the left. But what caught my attention was this water monitor was doing a behavior that I've never seen before. It was moving its head from left to right, left to right, but low on the ground quite quickly. I, and I, I don't understand why it was doing that. It was also obviously poking its tongue out into the air and we know that they pick up scents in the air and that's how they sort of taste, if you will. And, and they've obviously got a very prominent uh, Jacobson organ, which they use on a regular basis, a vomeral nasal organ, if you must. And I wonder if it's not a mating pair. It'll be quite interesting. We are getting to that time of the year. I mean, crocodiles like to lay their eggs in October. I wonder if it's the same for the water monitors, which would maybe mean why they would come together and sort of doing courtship and mating. But very interesting. Hopefully the other one comes out again. Mm, they were very relaxed. I mean, again, we're not particularly close. But it was just so interesting. I've never seen any uh, uh, a beautiful big... Uh, water monitor do something like that but perhaps some of you have already seen it maybe you can help explain this behavior if you have seen that before or maybe one of the other presenters have seen it and gave an explanation to it please let me know hashtag safari live on twitter that would be fantastic or you can comment away in the youtube chat and we can figure it out but i will try and do a bit of research when i get back to camp and i shall also ask tristan he seems to have spent quite a bit of time with water monitors there's lots going on I really wish one of these birds would catch a fish now too. That would be the real cherry on top. It's a pity our crocodiles that didn't stare around. There's the heron is back onto its perch again. It's obviously relaxed with us and didn't mind coming all the way back. Standing very, very still, knees bent, ready to strike, but also to hold onto the branch. It doesn't want to fall into the water once it's caught a fish. That's typically what they'll go for, but I was telling you the other day, they'll eat pretty much anything from a large invertebrates, I'm sure, to frogs. Wait, again, you see, it's, I'm sure it's picking little insects that are sort of coming past off the surface of the water because they're tiny. And to me, that just looks even too small to be a little fish. And it's not really sort of jabbing its beak down into the water. It's really just piercing the surface. That's why I think it's maybe insects of some kind that it's feeding on. See if it's going to do it again. I'm going to be time consuming obviously and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily energy efficient to constantly keep going for smaller prey like that because you'd have to feed the entire day but when you live out here in nature you can only take what you can get and if that means you have to catch a hundred small things versus ten big things to get your you know your daily food requirement that one looked a little bit more fish like that one actually looked like it had a tail so maybe there's some little tilapia around here or even little barbels that are swimming about and hiding under the shade of the tree because that's typically what they'll do they also hide in, on a hot day like this and it's trying to catch them maybe the little insects are attracting the small fish but this is cool but we'll hang around here for a little bit we'll see what other interesting things we can find i'm going to send you across to byron and he's managed to locate the largest mammal we have in africa